Hey, welcome to another Photoshop video. For this image, I want to restore some of that lovely Alpen Glow effect, which means I want to introduce some more red tones to the bright side of those mountains. If you want to follow along this tutorial, feel free to download the raw file. You can find the link to it in the description of the video. And now let's go. So here we are in the camera raw editor. The general idea for this image is to get back some more saturation, introduce a lot more red tones to the highlights of the image and see what we can do with the shadows. So for more saturation, I'm going to switch the profile to Adobe Landscape. This works really, really good as you can see already. Then I'd want to head into the basic panel and adjust the white balance. So let's see, I think I can raise the temperature a little bit to make the whole scene a little warmer and you can see this will immediately help with that Alpen Glow effect. So that looks pretty good. I'm not changing the tint because I think it looks good with that purple color cast. So next up, I do want to drop the highlights. I'm going to drop them quite a bit just to prevent overexposure in those very bright areas on the mountain faces. Then I do want to raise the shadows very, very slightly. And I also want to increase the whites. And let's increase the blacks as well. So that looks okay for now. I do, however, think the image lacks some contrast. So let's change that. Okay. And at that point, I think I might want to drop the exposure just to get some more attention to the highlights. All right, that looks pretty good. Now let's also make this image a little sharper by adding some texture. Not much, just a little bit. That's already enough. And then let's compare to before. You can see that colors have already changed quite dramatically. The whole scene is a bit darker, but I think it's better this way. So next up, I'm not going to touch the vibrance or the saturation in this case, because I really don't want to overdo it here. At first, I wasn't sure about local adjustments. However, at this point, I think I might want to add a linear gradient just to the sky up here and I'm going to tilt it a little bit towards the right side because from the left you can see the sunlight is coming in. So with, with this linear gradient I'm bringing down the exposure just a little bit. All right, perfect. And I guess that's already it for the local adjustments. Now let's do some color grading and I'm going to start that in the color mixer tab first with the hue. At that point we can see a rather subtle purple color cast which I want to slightly fix. So I'm going to use the purple hue and bring it down and thus we get some more blue tones in this image. And let's head over to the saturation tab. Here I think I might want to boost the blue saturation just a notch like that and then let's head into the luminance tab yeah let's try and bring down the blue luminance very very slightly making the sky a little darker and we could maybe play around with the orange luminance just restore some more colors in those brighter areas on the mountains all right that looks good now let's head into the split toning Let's start with the highlights and of course I'm going to use a very warm color tone in here. Somewhere in this range. But the saturation is too much so let's bring it down. I want to use a very low saturation just to add a very subtle effect here. For the mid-tones I'm doing the same thing with a warmer color tone. And again use a low saturation just like that. Perfect. And then for the shadows of course, I do want to have some color contrast, so I'm going with the cold color tone, which works well with the warmer color tones from previously. And again, drop the saturation very, very low. Perfect. Finally, in the calibration tab, I do want to bring down the blue primary hue. And this will help enhance that Alpen Glow effect some more. 
Finally, we can sharp this image in the details tab, so as always, bring down the radius, increase the details, add some masking, so only the important areas are affected, and then add sharpening. Done. So that's it for the raw adjustments, let's open up this image in Photoshop to finish the editing. So first off, I really really don't like this snowy patch on the bottom right corner. So let me try to fill that using the spot healing brush. That worked really good. That's exactly what I wanted. And let's see if I can clean up the shot some more. There are a few unnecessary spots here and there. I do think I want to get rid of all those houses as well, just to make it look a little more remote. And I can always just paint over them with the spot healing brush because they are so tiny. Okay, looking good so far. So at that point, I think this guy could use some more adjustments. For that reason, let's create a sky selection. So head over to select and say sky. That didn't work as expected. So let me try a different approach here. I'm using the quick selection tool. Let's just brush over this sky very roughly on the areas which I don't want to have selected. I'm holding down the alt key and just brush over them. Just like that. I only need a very, very rough sky selection. I'm not working very precisely here. So that's looking good for the moment. Now with this selection active, let's hit Ctrl C to copy that, then Ctrl D to deselect the area. And now I'm hitting Ctrl V. And here we have our new sky layer. Of course, we need to adjust the position, but that is looking good. So on that sky, I do want to add some motion blur. And to do this, I am going to select the sky again. So I'm holding down the Ctrl key and click on the thumbnail of our sky layer. Now let's head into the filters, go to blur, and here let's choose motion blur. The angle is set to zero, so we do have a nicely horizontal motion blur. And now we can play around with the distance a little bit. I think that's looking pretty good. Let's apply it like that. And again, hit Ctrl D to deselect the area. Then let's apply a layer mask on that sky layer. And use a black brush to clean up any leftovers, like you can see right here. Just brush over it. All right, but that's looking very, very good. So with this motion blur effect, I do have reduced the structure in the clouds and thus made the image a little less chaotic. At this point, let's merge those two layers and take a look at the Nick Collection plugin. And first off, I do want to use the Brilliance Warmth effect and just introducing some more warmth to the shot. Maybe slightly drop the saturation as well, because right now I'm a little overwhelmed by all those colors. All right, but that's looking very good. And let's see if we can add any other useful filter. I do have the Glamour Glow effect in mind, but actually I don't think this works here. Instead, let's give the polarization effect a try. This might actually work. Just need to play around with the sliders a bit. So again, I don't want to overdo it. So I'm very, very careful with the strength here. But I think I'm pretty happy with this. So let's apply it like that. All right, that's looking very good. At this point, I might want to crop the image because I'm not sure if I'm happy with that framing right now. So let's see what we can do. I want to take away a bit of the foreground, maybe like that. Let's check it out. Well, I'm not sure if I'm going to crop at all. So let's just finish at this point. And I hope this video was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions left, as always, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you very much for watching this video.